Hey everybody, welcome back to AmmoMan.com. My name is Kenneth Miller, and today I want to talk about how to paint a rifle. This topic is pretty well covered already, but whether you just like watching these type of videos or you're brand new to painting a rifle, I'm gonna walk you through step by step how to do it for yourself. This is just how I've done it for a little bit and it seems to work pretty good for me for my needs. So feel free to use whatever you like and don't use whatever you don't. First, you might be asking, why do people paint their rifles? People in the military have been painting their rifles for decades, camouflaging even longer. People who play airsoft or even hunters or just everyday citizens oftentimes like to paint their rifles. And there's a couple reasons why. It's unique, it's fun, it's one way to separate your rifle from a lineup of rifles. The second and arguably most important reason why someone may choose to paint their rifle is to camouflage their rifle. A rifle, or any gun for that matter, is relatively easy to identify even at great distances. Typically they come black, sometimes they're a chrome finish. Nowadays you can find them in a flat earth tone, but typically it's very common to see them come in a black factory anodized finish. Rifles have a shape that is relatively easy to spot because of the sharp outlines. There's features on a rifle that are easy to pick out between how long the rail is to the pistol grip to a stock that you can put in your shoulder or even an optic on top of the rail. These are little things that all together accumulate in something that's easy to identify. So if you're in the military and you're trying to hide in the woods from an enemy, it can be pretty critical to camouflage your rifle in some fashion, whether it's using paint or wraps or netting or just natural vegetation, that could be critical for a soldier. For an airsofter, they might just want to copy what they see the military using so that they can continue to immerse themselves in their game. For a hunter, an animal might be able to spot them and it could ruin their hunt. So there's, there's a lot of varying reasons why you may choose to paint or camouflage your rifle. Concealment is going to be one of the higher priorities behind it. If you so choose to paint your rifle using colors that are not in a natural environment, such as pink or blue, that's fine, you do you. But today I'm gonna to talk about specifically painting a rifle or camouflaging a rifle for concealment. A third reason why people may choose to paint their rifle over some other method is it's so simple. Getting a can of paint from the store or even two cans or three cans is still going to be a cheaper option compared to the others on the market. Cerakoting can be a really awesome option if you want something that's a factory finish, professionally done, but some of the problems that come with that is you have to wait for it and either ship it off and not have your firearm or still drop it off at a gun store in your local area. Lastly, what goes with simplicity is it's cheap, it's affordable. Going and painting a rifle for, let's just say around $25 for a couple cans of paint from the hardware store versus going and shipping it off to get Cerakoted or any other option, this is a relatively cheap way to customize a paint job to your desired outcome, whether that's for concealment or just for fun. Painting with, with spray paint can offer you quite a bit of flexibility and you can also change it later on if you don't like it. It's not that hard to do. It's, not, it's okay to layer it a couple times and if you really did wanna just remove the whole thing and start over, it's relatively easy to strip the paint. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. You may be worried about painting your actual rifle. Don't worry, I've got you covered. I understand that some people may not be ready to paint their optics or certain accessories because they may want to sell them later on. And for whatever reason, they just don't want to sell it painted. People could bring the price down or whatever it is. I understand that. If it's a duty grade rifle or this is something that you're using for training continually, I would say just go ahead and paint it. It's not that big of a deal, but if you really wanna reduce the amount of things that are painted on your rifle, separate from just the upper receiver or the lower receiver, I've got you covered. We're gonna go over a couple of hybrid methods using camo form and camouflage wraps. This stuff is awesome. It's a really great way to uh, break up the outline of your, your rifle without actually painting it. Um, one of those methods is extremely useful because you can take this camo form right here you can actually wrap a piece of equipment and then you can paint over that. This is extremely convenient because if you don't like that, you could always just peel the camo form off. This works equally well with tape. I just find that depending on what ty type of tape you use, that may wear out quicker. This camo form seems to hold up really well. It's actually washable and reusable. So if for whatever reason there are parts of your rifles 
or guns or whatever it is, whether it's an AR-15 or a Mosin Nagant or an SKS or a 308, these principles pretty much cross over as long as you just tape off the important components of the rifle. One last thing I forgot to mention before we dive in all the way is you can also take these principles of painting a rifle and you can paint other pieces of equipment too. You can always paint pieces of nylon gear, water bottles. Here's one I've done in the past that turned out pretty good. I just did this in about like two minutes just with whatever I had on hand. And this has lasted me okay for probably the last two months or so. Um, again, you can always do these more detailed and better, but this, this works. This is a really easy method and you don't have to overthink it too much. Um, the paint we're gonna use today is the Rust-Oleum Camouflage line. These seem to work out pretty good. I've used these for quite a couple years now. You can always go to Cryolon and look at their flat um, paint line. I would just say be careful not to get a paint that is not a true matte finish. Some of them say they're, they're non-reflective finishes and that they're a, a flat color, but definitely do a couple of practice strokes with whatever brand you choose first before you put on your rifle just to make sure that it's not going to have a gloss or a semi-gloss finish. As for colors and patterns, I cannot directly tell you what you should use. I will tell you this, running your patterns horizontally instead of vertically tends to be a little bit more natural for to deceive the eye. Um, horizontal patterns are something you can see out in nature aside from trees. So if you're going to do a pattern, I would suggest running your, your paint strokes at an angle instead of straight up and down unless you just like that tiger stripe look, which is totally fair. Go forth, enjoy that. Other than that, you can typically go out into your environment, look at what generally the colors are around you, maybe some vegetation, what type of trees or brush there is, and use that as inspiration for what type of colors and patterns you should use. Another great thing that really helps out is using stencils. If you want a couple of options for how to get a stencil without actually purchasing one, my recommendation is to go online, look for pictures of whatever type of pattern you want, whether it's a grid or certain vegetation, print off those pictures or trace them out, and then take those and put them on a piece of um, laminated paper, and then you can cut them out, and these are also basically the exact same thing as a stencil purchased. They're reusable, they're durable, these work really well, and you can match whatever you want for your environment with these. You'll also have the cutouts. So if you cut those little pieces out, you'll additionally have individual pieces of brush or leaves or grids, whatever it, uh, suits your fancy. So those are a great option. In conjunction with that, you can always use simple things like laundry bag netting. This is a really common one just because it's so easy, it's reusable, it's, it's pretty much found everywhere. You can use pretty much anything as a stencil for a camouflage paint job. If you want to, you can always just pick up something that's laying around your house that you have no use for and you can do a couple of practice paint strokes over that on a piece of cardboard and that'll give you an idea what the pattern might look like. If you're really into the art of camouflage, you can always do a deep research dive on counter shading and the four uh, camouflage principles. I highly recommend doing that just because it's fun to know and learn, but though it may be marginally helpful in your rifle painting, um, it's all gonna kind of wear in eventually, so I wouldn't be too concerned about that. You could probably just paint the whole thing just tan, and that would still do a pretty good job of breaking up that black outline. If you do wanna do a deep dive on counter shading and you wanna understand a little bit more about what color to put on what part of the rifle, my basic piece of advice would be to paint the exterior parts or the parts that jut out from the rifle, like the, the brass deflector or even the forward assist, perhaps your, your optic. Go ahead and paint those a uh, darker color and then the parts that are underneath or uh, shaded, you can paint those lighter. One of the great things about doing this type of project is that it doesn't take that many tools and supplies. You probably have most of the stuff that you need on hand. Really, as long as you have some tape to mark off the important components of your rifle, maybe a mask so you don't breathe in a ton of the, the paint, um, some gloves, if, you, if that matters to you, there's really only a few items that really make any difference. 
Okay, I think we're ready to finally start painting our rifle. The first thing we need to do is make our weapon safe and clear. So go ahead and remove that magazine. If there happens to be ammo in it, go ahead and clear it out. Now that you have an empty magazine, we're gonna put that to the side and make sure that our rifle is clear by pulling the bolt to the rear and clearing the chamber. Today, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take apart all of the accessories on my brand new BCM upper, and I'm going to make sure to tape off all the important components. I am electing to go ahead and just tape off my entire lower since I've already painted that in a scheme that I like. I wanna see what that two-tone looks like. Again, I can go back and change this if I hate it and just copy the exact same color scheme as I went with previously. Another thing I'm gonna do is just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to try to tape off as much as possible and do this in a detailed manner. I normally wouldn't do this. I would just tape off the important components and spray the whole thing, barrel included. Uh, but I'm kind of curious what it would be like, how intensive it is just to mark off even more. Um, for those of you who would like to retain the most amount of its original um, look. Now that we've ensured the safety of our rifle, we are going to begin the prep and staging process. So we're going to take our alcohol pad and our rag and we're gonna wipe the entire, entire rifle down. We're just going to make sure that there's no dirt and grime on any part of the rifle that we're going to paint. You don't necessarily have to worry about the inside of the rifle. I would just wipe down the exterior of the rifle before we add on our tape. The reason we wipe the entire rifle down is to ensure that the paint coats uh, evenly. I've heard that people sometimes like to go over their rifle with a coarse brush such as this. I, I don't recommend doing that and the reason is because I want to leave the factory coat on the rifle as much as possible because it protects the rifle. I don't want there to be any bare metal. So I'm really just adding spray paint on top of the factory finish. Other than that, I like to paint, uh, to tape off my trigger mainly because I don't like getting paint on it and I don't like that sticky feeling because it lasts there for a while until I shoot enough to where it will leave. The buffer tube has information on it and it, it already has been painted so there's no reason for me to do that again. Again, same with the charging handle. My optic is not painted and I don't want to paint it so I'm gonna leave it in a factory finish and instead I'm gonna camouflage it using one of those hybrid methods I mentioned before and I'll show you at the, at the end how we do that with some camo form. Other than that, I've just uh, taped off my muzzle device so that I can add suppressors to that and it doesn't impact that at all. Um, and I don't wanna bother with getting paint on threads or even play a risky game there. For today's example, I went ahead and plugged up every spot where the barrel would catch some paint. I just wanna see what it, what it looks like and uh, be a little bit more detailed with my prep and then just see if I like the way it looks. If, if Again, if I don't like any of this at the end, I can simply um, redo the paint job. It's not that big of a deal. Some of you may not want to do that. There's not really any cons to it other than the fact that if you paint your entire barrel underneath the rail, obviously it gets hot and when the spray paint heats up, it uh, tends to turn pink. So it's more, it's like a tannish pink you can hardly tell that it looks like a different shade. It really just looks like brown and tan. Um, you can definitely see it on the, the gas tube where, where I've painted the gas tube. That pretty much is like a very strong pink color now. But other than that, the entire barrel is pretty much just uh, brown and tan. Other than that, you've got your serial number on your lower receiver or wherever it is on your, your given rifle. I would just recommend if it's not etched into the, it's not like dremeled deep into the receiver, if it's just lasered on there, I would recommend putting a piece of tape over that. And then you can just leave that and do your paint job over that piece of tape. And if you ever need to access that information, you can just peel the tape off. If it's not critical information and you have it either written down somewhere else or you don't need it at all, then maybe it's okay to paint um, directly over that. But I would just recommend keeping any pertinent information on the rifle. All right, so I know this video thus far has been very long-winded and I'm so grateful for you for sticking with me. 
Uh, now that we're actually painting our rifle, I just take the lightest color that I've selected and do that as a base coat. I'm not suggesting you use the gray I'm using, but if you want to, go ahead. Just, like I said, use whatever colors you find in your natural environment. For me, I just wanted to try this gray. So I like to take uh, my time, and it, again, even going as slow as possible, this still only takes about 10 minutes to do. So I like to let each coat dry in between. That way the paint coats evenly and the patterns look good. If you pull the paint and paint too close, then it feels weird to hold and touch. And if you underpaint, it tends to just wear out too quickly. And then you're gonna have to repaint more often than you want to. So I'm just taking my time and it still is gonna go pretty quickly. Again, this is a demo rifle. So I'm showing you pretty much every single technique that I typically would use between tape, stencils, and netting. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to use every single technique. You can just pick one of these and you're gonna be fine. But I'm just showing you uh, what each technique will look like when painting. So at the end, you can look at different parts of the rifle and see which techniques you like the most and how they turn out. Also, I just want you to see every technique so you can feel comfortable trying it for yourself. So all I'm doing is adding these different colors, different stencils, and kind of bouncing between until the rifle looks uh, closest to what I'm happy with. And then we'll move on to the last step where we'll uh, put all our accessories back on and finish camouflaging our optics or weapon lights uh, as we see fit. All right, so go ahead and grab your camo form and start to unwrap it. It's a little tough to unwrap and that's because it's uh, self-adhering. It's very akin to an athletic style uh, wrap or tape. So it's, it's very tacky and sticky and it will, it will stay onto itself, whatever you're wrapping it around which is great for what we're doing and it's very moldable. So as you can see on the optic, it kind of shrinks around everything. I'm gonna wrap the entire optic, which means I'm covering both my windage and elevation as well as my brightness dial. We're gonna need to cut those openings that way we can access all of that even after we've wrapped the optic. So all I'm doing is putting a layer all the way over the top and then wrapping around it and we'll use some scissors to cut those openings. Uh, you're going to see in a second that I put ranger bands over the optic, my iron sights, and my uh, foregrip. I just do this because ranger bands come in handy for all sorts of purposes, and it's just easy uh, It's easy places to put them. So it's, you don't, it's not that you need it for your optic or the, the camo form, but that's just something I do, so you don't have to do that if you don't like it. Uh, next, I'm just going to grab my scissors, and I'm going to be very careful to cut around the the front and rear part of the optic glass. Try not to scratch your uh, lens, obviously. And then I'm just gonna pull the camo form around it. That way it's got a nice tight seal around the optic and I don't have a ton of extra material hanging off. You could pre-cut the holes in the camo form and then pull it over, but I think it just you it's too easy to cut the hole too big. So I like cutting a really small little slit in the optic and then uh, kind of forcing it over and then it being very a very tight fit around the optic. Again, I'm just doing the same exact thing around my brightness dial and my windage and elevation knobs. That way I can uh, zero my optic whenever I want. And that's pretty much it. So as you can see, this is the final product. We could obviously let this dry longer, um, but it's, it's fully dry now. We did a couple coats and then just let it sit. So all we're gonna do now is just let it kind of wear in naturally and then we'll go out and we'll shoot it. And the longer we let that process go, the better it's gonna be. Thank you all so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Drop a comment down below, letting me know what other type of content you guys would like to see into the new year. And I will do my best to put it on the schedule. Tune in on our website for updates, as well as our Instagram at Ammo Man. If you guys need any ammo, please be sure to buy it from ammoman.com. I sure appreciate your time. I hope to see you soon.